we got a lot of requests to explain what the viral is actually like to do a review. So what I want to do right now is guide you through step by step what it's like to row this thing and what are some of the uniqueness. All right, first up, you see it's the cockpit of a racing shell. So you actually have a 160 spread. So this is 160 centimeters. The inboards are adjustable. We have two screws here. And if you, if you take out the screws, you can actually make it longer or shorter. So we are very keen on having original boat measurements. The next thing is that there's only one resistance unit. So we have an air fan here on the bottom of the machine. And that air fan is connected to a felt brake and also to a heavy brake disc. It sounds complicated. Actually, it works in a way that you don't even have to adjust resistance anymore because the harder you pull, the more resistance you get. It's precisely like in the boat. And this is probably the thing that surprises people the most when they try it. It is very, very natural. It feels very good. One of the uniquenesses of this thing is that it gives you what we call mechanic feedback, which means that it makes you feel certain things that a boat does not make you feel. For example, if you start to apply, let's say with your left hand, the force at the catch a bit earlier, what happens is that on the right, nothing's there. It feels like an empty hole. The reason is very simple. When you apply force, you see there's a, there's a pull bar and inside there's a heavy transmission. And that transmission redirects its force all the way to the air fan. So this air fan is like the water. There's only one resistance. So if you start with the left hand earlier, you just take away some of the resistance for the right hand. If I start to row right now and I start to apply force, let's say, with the left hand a bit earlier, this is like empty. There's nothing. And this feels quite weird at the beginning. But when you're symmetrical in terms of applying force at the same point of time, it is there instantaneously on both sides. If you row in the boat, what the boat does for all your rowers out there, the stern will slightly jump in direction. So it will swivel to the left or to the right. So this is probably not the most effective thing. The difference to the boat here is that the boat still goes forward and you don't really feel that you're not symmetrical in catching. And when you spend a bit of time on a bio-bower, it makes you sensible for certain things that you feel better. And when you then start to row in the boat again, you're much more precise than you were before. If you apply vertical motion while you apply horizontal motion, so you should do this, but as a matter of fact, you're going upwards too. It feels like a hole at the catch, a play at the catch. There is no resistance. And to many people who are not very good at catching in a way that the blade sits still and then only apply horizontal pressure, it feels weird. What all of us need to learn is to position the body in a way that your hands stay stable once you apply force. So that's the classic thing. Coaches want you to place the blade leave it where it is and only apply horizontal resistance. So this would be right and this would be wrong. And when you do high stroke rating, it is well possible that you simply start to do this one or start to do this one. And of course, there is no upward resistance. So this makes you feel like there is no resistance at all. But the moment you start to apply force in a horizontal way, the moment it feels very direct. This is extremely well made. This is a very direct transmission here. And we have spent a lot of effort to make sure it feels good. It's like an elaborate mechanic watch inside. And then you see this entire thing is on slides. Now, a lot of people ask, okay, should you sit still while you roll? No, you should move back and forth. The idea about the slides is that you take away some of that massive force that occurs here at the catch and in the boat, the thing is you move the boat. You don't move yourself so much. And here you should do the same thing. You should move it forward and backward. So you should slide forward and backward. And you see, if I don't row at all, it just move the thing back and forth with my own body weight. And the thing is when I catch, some of that, some of that force is transferred into motion, not boat motion, 
but by rower motion. So the overall effect of the slides is to take away some of that massive force momentum that runs through the body on static rowing machines. A boat is dynamic, so the by rower is dynamic as well. This is a major health factor. Now, the next feature of the by rower, of course, it, as the entire cockpit is made as the real racing shell, it transfers the force in a tangential way. This means there is no linear wear in the spine. It's not straight pulling, which is never healthy. It is actually going inwards, across and outwards again. And this strengthens the entire spine. So this is a major, major benefit. I actually don't know a lot of people who get back pain in a real rowing boat. Severe, I mean, muscles can always be tired, but back injuries in a rowing boat are very, very rare. The reason to me, and also to the doctors I talk to and to the scientists I talk to is that moving in semi-circle, that semi-circular movement is much healthier because there's no linear wear in the spine. As soon as I have linear wear in the spine, it's an overload. If I have semicircular motion, there is no overload because you strengthen the muscles around it. Another key element on a by rower is that it can actually rotate the inboards. So I can actually turn, I can feather and square. You don't have to do it, but you can do it. Now let me explain a bit how this thing works. I have foot stretchers here. Foot stretchers is basically the foot plate if you're not familiar to rowing. So this is what the foot stretchers looks like from my position, from my view. So here I can open it and I can move it forth and back, tighten it again. I can also move it up and down and I can adjust it to my body height. Let's talk about electronics. The way the spy rower meshes is so precise that we have a 1% accuracy tolerance. This is almost scientific level. It's very, very precise. Some of the standard rowing machines have up to 10% accuracy tolerance. So we have, we have set a whole new standard with this. The way it works is that we have a strain gauge here. A strain gauge is basically a small sensor you attach to a steel axle and it senses the bending. So inside here, there's a silver steel axle. And this bending measures the force. So every time I apply force, we have a slight bit of bending, just very, very little. And this is being measured. So you see that cable is going to a little black box. It's an um, electronic system in there. And down here, there's a magnetic angle sensor. And this magnetic angle sensor actually tells us the real position of the oars. So it's not about just having a force curve over the time you need to do the stroke. We actually know where you are. So we can have a force by angle curve. This might not be interesting for all people, but especially if you're into high competitive rowing, this is what you want to have. You don't have to use it, but it's there. With the data we get here, what we do is we transfer it by Bluetooth to a device. So I have a tablet here. I can also use a smartphone. This cell phone here is a Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge, and it works very well with this. The app, you find it on Google Play. It's called the BioRower app, and the BioRower app basically works as a display for the BioRower. Let's go through the basic functions and how to use it. So in order to start your electronic system, what you need to do is you need to turn on the sensors on the left side and also on the right side and then they start to transmit. Then you need to connect with your device. When you turn it on, you see a constant red LED light, which will then switch to a green LED light, a flashing LED light, which means the bio says I'm ready to transfer data. So this is called the cockpit mode. The cockpit mode consists of an overview of the left and the right side, so it shows your balance. This would be the angle, so how long your stroke is in degrees for the left side and for the right side. 103 on the left, 109 on the right. Average value for each side. In the middle you see the watts for the left and the watts for the right side. And here is your combined wattage. This is your 500 meter split. And this is the distance you rode so far. The stroke count 
the stroke rate and the time. Now, this is just an overview of the training sessions. If you had intensities, you will see higher um, values here. If you have low sessions, it's going to be steady like this. Then we have the balance mode. The balance mode is an angle by force curve. So force over the x-axis with the, the x-axis which is the angle. So a force by angle curve, left side, right side. It's good to check the symmetry. Your time, the stroke rate and the stroke count. Now this is a force curve, small one, and a handle position curve. So how you move your hands throughout the stroke on the left side and on the right side on a timeline. And this is the pure force curve mode. So you have force curves here on the left, you have force curve, a blue one for the right side, an orange one for the left side, and the position of your hands. So if you, for example, row very smooth or you make a stop at the finish before you put your hands away, the curve will go flat. Now as the stops at the finish, before it goes away, you see the curve is running flat. So every time at the finish, his handle curve sits still before it actually goes down again. Same if you had stops at the catch, it would be the same thing again. Now if you click on stop, uh, we see a, an overview of the session. So today is June 10th, 2018, it was 12.06. The power balance left and right, so 45.1% on the left. 54.9% on the right, average power of 154 watts, 70 watts on the left, 84 on the right. The angle is 102 to 106, 102 on the left, 106 on the right on the average, which makes a combined stroke length of 104 degrees. He rode for 1 minute 45, he rode for 390 meters, an average speed of 3.7 meter per second, um, an average pace of 215, and an average stroke rate of 20 strokes per minute. The bio rower is used by a lot of different groups of people, by people who have never sat in a boat. It is used by people who do high competitive rowing in absolute elite level, trying to go for the Olympics. It is used for physical rehabilitation, as we have the semicircular motion. Uh, it is used in clubs, it is used to teach beginners because it's so realistic you can do it in a safe environment on land. And it's used by masters rowers, by juniors, by so many different people, in hotels, in gyms, there's basically no limit. When we started with Viro, we thought this is only going to be for professional rowers. Today we see that the demand for realistic rowing is so big, it's across all different age groups and customer groups and user groups, that the bio rower is now a universal product. It is realistic indoor rowing. This is how we define it today. But still, the standards we set come from competitive rowing sport. This is our background. So all the things we make are actually dedicated to competitive rowing. And this is how we can keep the insanely high quality. I hope a lot of questions are answered right now with this small video. It's all about, you know, giving you uh, an overview of what this thing is actually like. A lot of people know it, so most people who buy the bio rower right now see the videos, like it, and buy it off the internet. 